Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Genoa Bay, British Columbia. Along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it and others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. those of you who are not new to the show, you will realize I am now welling well into my winter schedule where I spend the week or at least the bulk of it up here in Genoa Bay working on boats in uh, the shed and I spend my weekends, hopefully long weekends, down in Victoria aboard MV Poem. So Jordy is still out here on the ball which means uh, MV Zephyrus is still in the shed because we still have another couple of weeks of work to do there and uh, it's going really well. Let's jump back in time and uh, finish up that cabin side. And well here we have the sill that I removed. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut out a section so that we have a basically a cross section of this uh, that will be useful for taking proper measurements off. And we'll just take a little plug of it here. Okay, so here we can see the cross section now. So this was the bottom against the deck, and if you look carefully, you can see that it's slightly beveled outwards. This is the interior. Uh, this part was visible, and the trim covered this, and this, of course, is the rabbit that the cabin side sits in. So we have to recreate this, but there's a problem. And the problem is this. It is slightly more than two inches, about two and an eighth, in either direction, almost two and a quarter actually in that direction. And the only lovely big Sapili stock I have, oh, although lovely and nominally two inch, is actually about one and seven eighths. So if I cut it out this way, I am not going to be deep enough to really do the structure properly because I want the face of the cabin side to be where it is and the inside face needs to be where it is. So if I cut it out of the wood this way, I have a slight advantage in that I can just cut down the top edge of the inside here, which is really only cosmetic as long as I leave plenty of material in here for the cabin side to sit against. And that got me to thinking. And the thought was, a couple of years ago, when this same repair was done on the port side, this piece is actually quite a bit shorter than it should have been, as you can see in the one on my hand from the starboard side. So this fellow cut the wood out this way and just let that be as tall as it could. I always wondered why that didn't fit, right? As a result, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. In fact, if I set the uh, bevel flush with the bottom. This is on a slight angle and it helps adjust a little bit. So not too bad. The other option is I could <laughs> cut it out on a 45. I'd get all these faces correctly. All I'd be missing is a little bit of the bottom of the inside edge that's inside the trim. But the amount of cutting and figuring, it's just not worth it. Let's get going. Beast. Next to determine this bevel angle, but before that I'll make sure it's nice and smooth so there's no chance I'm uh, measuring an inappropriate angle. All right. Very nice. Okay, set it up on the saw. Okay, now I'm kind of going around this the long way because I could just put the block against the blade, but I thought we'd go through the process of transferring it using a tri-square. All right, so now I'm just going to loosen the bevel lock on the saw, tip it a little bit, take the tri-square and try it against the blade. Again, it's critical that you have the blade out as far as possible so that you have more length to work with. The other thing is try not to let the tip of the tri-square sit on a tooth, which will be slightly proud of the, um, the face of the blade. So if we pull this back just a bit. I find it easier if I set the bottom to touch first and then close the gap at the top. Let's see how that well works for me. There. 
Why don't we try actually just checking the block against it? And this will expose one of the problems with doing it this way. If I set it against the insert here, it doesn't actually fit perfectly because the insert is not actually perfectly flush with the table. So I'll just add this piece of wood here, which will project over the flush table and we'll set that against the blade and it is absolutely sweet. Okay, let's do some ripping. As these cuts are so critical, I'm going to do them all with a short cutoff of the main stock just at every step of the way to make sure I'm not making any mistakes. Let's go. So now we have the bevel between the base and the inside face correct. All right, let's cut the actual piece. Now because I actually cut the bevel on the back and not the bottom, I now have to cut the same bevel on the inside face. So the inside and outside are parallel. So I'll first I'll do it with the test block. Step is just to put the little round over on the inside edge. And there you go. And as I mentioned before, it is going to be shorter than the original, uh, but that's okay because, of course, the one on the port side is already exactly this size. Okay, let's do the full length one. Okay, then let's do a trial fit. The front end needed a bit of a miter cut to go against the bulkhead there. So let's slide it in back here. Nice, very nice. All right, well, we're one step closer. And well, good morning, new day, new drill. Of course, it's still a Makita. Now this is the slightly heavier duty version than the one I had before. And uh, it's pretty nice. Comes with the super heavy duty extra clampy arm, which I have to say the mechanism is quite nicely made on it. Um, so please, this should last me a fairly long time. But now that I have the ability to use a drill again, I thought I'd have a deeper look at my old one. And thinking of some way to, let me just put a battery in it so you can see what I mean about the chuck. Um, the chuck no longer does anything. But looking carefully inside, I did see a small standard screw in there. Uh, it's always worth investigating, isn't it? Let's have a look at what's going on inside of this. Oh, I only get one chance at this. Maybe it's a left-hand th right, left thread. Oh gosh, it is. Sneaky, sneaky. One would imagine it was just some sort of spline shaft. Okay, maybe this requires some Googleage or some YouTubeage. Get back to that later. All right, I have one piece of full inch Sapelli mahogany that's suitable for this job, so I must not mess it up. Okay, let's bring in the real one for the first test fit. I've done some trimmage at both ends to make sure it sits in nicely. And right there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just pry it up all the way along and put little shims under to hold it there uh, to get an idea of where this really is. Okay, so on the whole, it's great. You're probably right at the line that you can see the slightest little um, line in here. And I think uh, that's probably because as I finished the cut uh, in the cabin side, I dropped down a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little bit off the top of this and that should cope with that. But from here back, it looks very good. 
Okay, I've done a little sanding, a little planing, and it's getting close. Maybe just a little bit of a gap here, and I think I gotta take that up way back here. Okay, so after a few iterations of fiddling with this a little bit, I'm quite pleased, and uh, that's ready um, to be attached, with the exception that the bottom now needs to be trimmed to fit into the rabbet on the sill. So here is my sample cross-section of the sill. So I'm just gonna use that to scribe all the way along where the bottom of the cabin side needs to be cut. Easy peasy. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a little more meat than the line shows and I'll explain why in just a moment. And that's because I'm gonna put a very slight bevel on this edge. And that's because I have to un actually install the cabin side before the sill because of the way I'm not gonna be able to slide it in any other way. So the cabin side will have to be attached to the existing cabin side. And then the entire sill is gonna to have to slide in from the inside. And because it's already on a slope, because the deck is sloped, I need a sort of equivalent slope in the mating surfaces between the sill and the cabin side. Okay, so it's just a little bit of bevel on here. And the corresponding bevel on the sill. Now, of course, it would have been a lot easier if I'd done this when I was milling this, but, you know, hindsight, yada, yada, yada. So let's see if I can get this in place with the sill. Kind of holds in place. Okay, let's see if I get the sill in. Woohoo! Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Holy mackerel. So I came outside with a pencil to see if I have to scribe any tight spots. And no, 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 no. It's pretty much perfect all the way along. Man, I am really, really, really pleased. And out here I have a very, very uniform uh, joint very very pleased with that very pleased with that now um, The sill here also needs a little bit of easing on this out edge, outer edge so that it matches the sills on the rest of it and I happen to know because I did it this sill is actually um, Sealed with uh, 291 and then sanded because it's a it's a, a sandable uh, sealant and then uh, painted over so I'll be doing the exact same thing here um, Really really this is going okay Okay, so it's time to bond in some of these Dutchmans, and you're probably wondering what adhesive are you going to use, Peter? Well, the obvious choice would be thickened epoxy, but that is not what I'm going to use. What I'm going to use is good old PL construction adhesive. And the reason I am is because that's plenty for what I'm doing here. This doesn't need to be all that strong. And in fact, don't let me suggest that this stuff isn't incredibly strong. Of course, it's very convenient, it's very cheap, it's very easy to work with. I think it actually could be used in a lot more wooden boat work than it gets credit for. Anyway, so uh, let me goop these all up together with uh, just enough screws to basically clamp it in, and then I'll really give you the shocker.
I couldn't resist fiddling with it a little more. Uh, last night I was imagining that perhaps the jaws or perhaps a spring that pushes forward on the jaws in the chuck had just got a little bit stuck. So I gave it some tapping, some tapping, and suddenly, well, it's semi-operational again. So I'm going to uh, put a ton of lube in, oh, except one of the jaws is further out than the other ones. That, that can't be good. That, you know, that, that, that can't be good. All right, then I have YouTube the solution. I was part way there. Now this is the one jaw that has come out. Um, the trick is to take the screw out as I did and then chuck a large Allen wrench in the chuck. Uh, now, of course, with only uh, two jaws in there, this might not tighten up as well as I might like it to, but let's see what we can do. Of course, this type of uh, repair only works if the chuck works. And fortunately, now that I've got at least two jaws working, it does. I put it in low range and apparently one quick strike with a hammer. Let's try that again. Poor thing wants to go. I think I've done this a disservice. Thank goodness. And here we are at the decisive moment, ready to install the extension to the cabin sides. Now you're all wondering, as I was for quite some time, how to affix it to the existing cabin side. And I went through all kinds of possibilities, long screws through the bottom and um, offset screwdrivers and maybe pocket screws from the outside because of course it's painted so... I'm just going to glue it. I'm just going to glue it and it's going to be just fine. Not only that, I'm just going to glue it with my old friend PL. Now because it's absolutely crucial I have no voids at all here, I am going to butter this out to make sure it is perfectly coating the surface. And there we go. Now, very much like I did when I was test fitting it, I'm just going to wedge it up with some blocks of wood. So let's get it at least started here and there. There we go. Excellent. Now for some cleanup and some alignment. Okay, folks, I just got to tell you about a really interesting developing story. You all remember Scott Dressler, my very good friend and the shipwright that has done so much good work and has been a huge inspiration for me in the wooden boat community. Love Hi. you, Scott. Hi, Peter. <laughs> Some of you will also remember that he pretty much has looked after this boat, Altair, for what, a decade, Scott? Uh, 2014. Come on over, Scott. Stay in the shot. <laughs> He's looking after he's looking after a dog at the same time. How are you, pup? Anyway, in the last year or so, uh, Scott decided that it really has to move on to someone else. Yeah. Someone who can really take the baby. reins. What's it? You had a baby. Had a baby. You're trying to be a responsible adult. Yep. And uh, big old wooden boat stewardship is maybe a bit much for you. It is a baby. <laughs> Even though you're the guy to look after. I hope so. Yeah. Okay, so how did we come up with a plan? So I sold the boat in December to uh, this fine gentleman here. Yeah. Let me introduce to you. Uh, <laughs> Henry, so good to meet you. And, good to meet you too. And as a big part of the future of Altair uh, and the future of, you know, trying to find ways to make sure that these boats last forever. Yeah. Uh, it, takes, it takes a commitment. It takes a community to raise it. <laughs> it does. Whatever it is, yeah. uh, I'm just so thrilled because yeah. in the period when Scott was realizing that he couldn't look after Altair anymore, Henry stepped up. And uh, that, that takes a commitment that uh, you don't find every day. So Altair is going to carry on. I'm going to keep you guys up to date with the story. Um, you're thinking maybe you 
starting a show. Maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, we're hoping to launch our That's show sometime December. Absolutely. Christmas. So imagine another great wooden boat restoration YouTube channel starting sometime in the new year, pretty soon. And I'll certainly let you know when that happens. In the meantime, I'll be down here regularly because it's not far away and I always like to see what Scott's up to. Congratulations, you guys. Thank you. I love what you're doing. Thanks, Peter. Cheers. And good morning. I am super pleased with this. I was able to uh, clean any of the glue off the existing cabin side inside um, and actually clean it off. Um, they, at least they... <laughs> mm, this is good glue. <laughs> I didn't clean it off the outside, but I cleaned it off here underneath the pad of the clamp. And to be honest, I never would have guessed that... Uh, I have to show you this. Um, that this glue would have bonded uh, steel quite that uh, vigorously. Holy mackerel, I cannot get that. There we go. It pulled the wood out to do it. Yeah, that is typical with uh, construction adhesive. It's bloody strong stuff. Um, as a result, I'm not the least bit concerned about it being structural for here. Anyway, as I was saying, I got it really flush here, which makes me very, very happy. And uh, I was able to clean all the glue off the existing cabin side. So now I just have to clean it off down here. Now in order to reduce sawdust inside the boat, I'm actually gonna clean this glue off with my scraper. And I think that'll certainly get the bulk of it off. Um, and as I approach the uh, existing cabin side, I'll put a little tape up here. Gosh uh, forbid I slip and make a nasty gouge. But anyway, this is uh, this is gonna work just fine. Get these wedges out. Absolutely teeming rain out there. Oh yeah. All one piece. And now to install the sill. Now, this may annoy some of you. This is going to be installed completely dry. Uh, no bedding, no caulking in the rabbit here, no sealant in other words, nothing at all. Because, of course, my belief with all sealing is it's only around the very outside edge. I don't want to have multiple lines of sealant. Let me get this in, and um, it's a very tight fit, but it fits perfectly. I've done a couple of trial fits already to make sure it's in good. And then, uh, again, I'm totally um, modifying the way it's going to be fastened. But more on that in a minute. Let's just get it in. And uh, it requires a little bit of tapping here and a little bit of tapping there. Just a little bit to get it happy. There we go. Good, good, good. I have a little block to encourage it along. Very, very, very pleased. Very pleased. Let's have a look at that. Sitting nice, right, nice, 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 all the way in there. Excellent. As well as outside, we now have this nice tiny reveal that we'll put sealant in, as well as where I've put a little chamfer on the end, uh, the edge of the teak deck, I'll put, be able to put a bead of sealant in there and we'll be in great, great, great shape. Okay, so now in terms of fastening it, uh, if you remember, it, the original one was held in place with carriage bolts with the heads in little pockets in the bottom of the rabbit and nuts down here below the deck. Now, I really don't like that detail. I, 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 it's just prone to a bunch of problems as far as I'm concerned. So I'm simply going to lag bolt it up with two different lengths of lag bolts, three inches, what out here on the edge that'll go up into this part and two and a half inches actually in the existing holes that will go up inside where the original uh, carriage bolts were. And um, the, I'll stagger them in and out, in and out, so it actually holds this a little better and keeps it from flexing at all. And I think that actually is a better solution. And uh, later on, we can talk about how we're gonna attach the cabin sides to the sill. So first, a little relief all in where uh, the existing carriage bolt was. Just a little, and I'll run this up in there. And that is 
nice. Nice, nice. And now I'll drill some relief holes for the outer bolts. Of course with a flag to make sure I don't actually drill up into the mahogany. Easy peasy. And then a smaller pilot hole to get the bolt started. Now to fasten the cabin sides to the sill and if you remember there used to be a big carriage bolt put in at an angle with a big pocket here and a big pocket out here. I'm not doing that. Um, I'm going to put a lot more smaller fasteners closer together and they're simply going to be wood screws in this direction um, and then they'll be covered by the trim piece here and there's absolutely no uh, hole or anything on the other side. Often in fastening two pieces of wood, especially along, along a long surface, I much prefer lots of smaller fasteners rather than a few larger ones because then you have point loads. Whereas you have lots of smaller fasteners, you have a continuous uh, bond between the two surfaces. Anyway, that's my approach. So here, I'm just gonna scrub a quick little line across here where I'm gonna put all these screws and we'll just get to work. And I don't need much of a counterbore because, again, I'm not putting a plug in because it's going to be hidden by the trim. There we go. Put one of these about every four inches across along here and we'll be in good shape. In retrospect, every four inches might have been a bit much, but no harm, no harm, super solid. A final fine sanding and we're ready for oil. I love it, I love it, I love it. So here's the trim piece that goes over all of that. And it was in pretty rough shape, so it needed a full refinish. It's also pretty cheap wood. It's Marente uh, mahogany or something like that. In fact, that's pretty common. Both Jordi and Zephyrus, uh, most of the interior trim, other than the actual cabin sides, uh, were made with this Marente punky, nasty stuff, which I will purge, uh, at least from Jordi, completely eventually. Anyway, I just filled some nasty gouges, and we're just gonna sand that out. I jumped the gun here and my glue and uh, mahogany sawdust filler wasn't far enough along for that aggressive uh, sanding so I'll just have to uh, lay a little more in here and hit it with the heat gun and advance it to the point where I can get some finish on here. Okay, here comes a step that I've been dreading, but it has to be done, and that's to re-drill holes in the sill and the deck here uh, to pass these wires back down through this wire chase. Now, this is in fact what caused the bulk of the damage, well, probably all of the damage in the deck and the sill up here. And that's because the holes that were here actually cut through to the rabbit. So when the outside seal failed, water got into the rabbit and therefore down into the holes. And I can remember sitting here and feeling it soaking wet under here where the wires came through. So I knew there was trouble. So there's two ways I'm gonna make sure that never happens again. One, these holes are gonna be drilled out far enough that they do not cut into the rabbit. And two, we're gonna make sure that this boat is regularly maintained and then the outside seal never fails so there's no water in the rabbit anyway. Okay. I still hate it. And this basically goes right like that. So my holes are leaking here on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And again, I want to be comfortably off the rabbet. It does mean I will be dangerously close to the front edge, but these are small prices we have to pay. One. But that's pretty warm. And there we go, that nasty little project, done. And here we have the trim piece ready to get some uh, finish. And I'm not gonna use tongue oil on this because it's Marinte and not Sapella Mahogany and it won't react the same way. So I'm gonna use my old standby gel stain in Mahogany, which is, you know, fast becoming a favorite of mine. Anyway, so just a little of this globbed on all over and it'll be just delightful. Good gosh, this stuff is magic. And on goes the trim piece. Nice and simple. Well, hello there and welcome to the Travels to Jordy Beer of the Week coming to you this week from beautiful Tofino, British Columbia out on the Pacific Coast where we are on our annual pilgrimage to Tofino for Lady Zephyrus's birthday. Happy birthday, Lady Z! Thank you. Anyway, should we celebrate with a beer? Yeah, <laughs> we can do that. We've Something just, different. We, <laughs> we've, she's teasing because we've just come from the Euclulet Brewery and uh, we've actually just enjoyed their Party Wave Hazy IPA, but it is so incredibly good. In fact, it may be my favorite Hazy ever. Sorry, Caitlin. Sorry, Lady Z. <laughs> Effervescent. <laughs> Up until this point, it was a, a beer I had in San Francisco with my daughter, but this is absolutely fabulous. So birthday girl, have the first sip. Cheers. Cheers to, um, to you. <laughs> That was a good pause. Uh, cheers there, Finn. Quite intent on the ocean. Anyway. Um, I, heard ya. I know, exactly. Okay, so I can't remember what this is called. Party party Wave uh, Hazy from Euclulet Brewing. Man, that is a yummy beer. Man, that is a yummy beer. Oh, yeah. How are you? How are you? How are you? Okay, let's get going with some paperwork. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy t shirt is Get Out of the Ear. It is. Booty Bandy. Booty Bandy. Awesome. Um, I, w I won't have you explain what that means, but Booty Bandy, you have won yourself a Travels with Jody t-shirt and say out of my ear, you. <laughs> um, uh, get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Congratulations, Booty. I would like to send a huge thanks out to an unsolicited gift from Wally McKinnon, and that was support for buying my new Makita drill. Wally, thank you ever so much. Um, made a huge difference and pretty much paid for it. Uh, so thank you ever so much. And I have a lovely new Makita drill, which you've seen in the past episode. Thanks again, Wally. Tofino, it's awesome to be here. Is it always, not? Always awesome. We have to the surf. Here. We have some sun today. We had a fabulous drive over. I'm so grateful for these trips to Tofino because they are such a super break in a pretty hectic time of year normally. Hectic for you too in your work, I know. It's a little mini unwind. A little mini unwind. <laughs> and actually, I was thinking all along it was Finn's first trip to Tofino, but actually he's been once before. Yeah, he came as a puppy. As a puppy, we were here last spring. Now he's full grown. Full grown. This is full size <laughs> Finnegan, by the way. Go 24 to, pounds. 24 pounds, an awesome <laughs> size for a boat dog, no doubt about it. Doesn't mean he's, he's not still a pretty rambunctious 24 pounder. Yeah, he's a young male. Young male. <laughs> Need I say more? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah he's full of beans, is what he is. Full of beans. Excellent. <laughs> well, we have to wrap this up because we have to get off to dinner. Yep. And We're I'm quite excited tonight. about that. We're sheltering tonight at, at the newly rebuilt shelter restaurant here in Tofino. All they need now is a word of the week. Is it rebuilt or are they in a new location? They're in a new location, in other words. Yeah, yeah they suffered a fire. Looking and out on the water. I know, pretty excited about it actually. <laughs> 
So let's move along. I'm going to give you a super easy word of the week this week, and that word is birthday. You'll know what to do with it. Cheers. See you next week. <laughs> There you go, birthday girl. Folks, I just had a terror. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, uh, you used to only take four shims to hold this up. What has happened? So of course, I've cut the bottom off. Okay, okay, okay.